Here we are at downtown Lima, Peru. for 35 souls, which would be approximately 10, 11, 12, 13 dollars. And here we are with Jimbo. Yeah, it looks like you could get a hamburger in here. well friends all of this process right she's gonna tell you beautiful information about the weaving process friends right when you're ready you don't want to see friends please as it will be here 10 minutes 10 minutes of explanation and 20 minutes for shopping okay uh, yeah it's five to two and everybody please 2 30 on the bus okay two thirty on the bus Okie dokie, vamos Jesse, a la caque. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, nice. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to Chinchero. Oh, now I'm going to explain nice, yeah. our work. We work here at different dairies. We come in from the small communities of our village. And to, to begin our work, we use with two kinds of wool. We work with the alpaca wool and also we work with the sheep. But the packet is much softer and much finer. Now I'm going to come in around, touch and feel the difference. Yes, one touch for person. Two touch is $10. Okay, you know what? Let's go stand somewhere else. Oh, she gave me some. <laughs> <laughs> if it's helpful, grow hair. Does it grow hair? I want the one that grows hair. No, no, because it's too late for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Again. It's nice. Okay, now for our demonstration, I use sheep. It is dirty and greasy because the sheep never take a shower. Please <laughs> never take the shower. Cleans the lamelin. Sheep. Okay, the same, the same shampoo for for the alpaca. Yeah, our hair, our all of it. Yeah, it is a natural. Okay, look at the difference. Oh, wow. And after I finish, we start to spinning, we call pushka. We work just using our fingers. We are experts, we can dancing, cooking, carry our babies and kissing our boyfriends, no problem. <laughs> 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 if we break also, we don't have problems, we just fix using our fingers. After finish to make the pushka, 
we use different kind of flowers, plants, um, parasites to get different colors. The cochineo. This is chilca. This kind of bush we use to get different shades of green colors. Wow. I'm on the wrong side of getting a glare. Can I get anything? Uh, these over there? kind of flowers sure. we use to get the yellow colors. And also we use for our green colors. Oh. It's too and late. What is that? Oh, <laughs> that? <laughs> this is look like a chamomile, but yes, it's not it is. from the trees. What is the name of it? A coli. Mm. No, to get this nice color we use a uh, a white piggy and also the purple corn or black corn. Mm. Also we use to make a chicha morada. Do you know chicha morada? Chicha morada. Chicha morada is a sweet drink made from yeah. this corn. Oh. Mm. Uh, this is a kind of moss we use to get brown and orange corn. This is one of the most interesting. We call cochinilla. It's a kind of parasite which live in a prickly pear cactus. We collect it and we uh, we dry for two or three months in the sun, and we get really dry. Then we grind it and we get a powder. This is the powder. Nowadays, exporting for a cosmetic, especially for a lipstick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or lipstick, red color. And now I use a life of those ones. And now look at the sacrifice. This is the first color. And now to change the color, I place lime juice. Lime juice. Wow. Oh, orange. Oh, beautiful orange. We use also as a natural lipstick. Wow. wow. So beautiful. Our yeah. natural lipstick resists 24 hours and is kiss proof. Oh my God. Ah, kiss proof. Kiss proof. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you will be millionaires. <laughs> there you go. Kiss proof. Keep your lips soft. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful yeah, can I try? <laughs> no. For, she was asking if the lips are uh, soft. For kiss is one hundred dollars. Ah. <laughs> ah. Now we are going to show three different colors. Here we have yellow with the flower, with the bush, and in my pot I have clean and boiled water. Yes, I need the powder of the parasite. To fix the color, we use different kind of uh, minerals. Here we are going to add in uh, sulfur, which is uh, colba for us. Are you ready to take a picture? For picture is ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. It's twenty. <laughs> okay, one, two, and three. Oh, oh. Now I use salt to change the color. Salt to change the color. Now I have one question for boys. Yes, for boys. If you give me this answer, I give you a present. Try to guess what color is going to change with salt. Blue. No, bright, bright color. I have other for me. Green. Blue. Blue. Red. Good. No. Ah, you get the gift. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. What you say? There you go. Oh. Orange. Orange. Oh. Wow. Sir, do you want your present? Yes. yes. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no, for kids one hundred dollars. Your present is you can choose one of these things. <laughs> Yes, That's for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then That's we call it for half an hour on the leaves and flowers for one hour to keep the color. And then we rinse with a clean water and we hang it in a shade to get dry. After get all the color, uh, we work in our bath room. 
we work uh, in our loom three or four hours every day. We need 35 days to finish like this table right? mm -hmm. All the process are handmade. We don't use uh, copies or books because our work is generation to generation. We start five or six, very child to to try or oh, um, to learn all our work. In order to get finer and stronger work, we use this tool. We call Rupi. This is the question for the ladies. Try to guess what kind of bone is this. Don't say guinea pig. <laughs> Mama. No. How? No. Apacatinas. Human. A whale bone. A whale bone. A whale bone. <laughs> the vegetable ivory. No. Do you want to know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This bone is a tourist bone who didn't buy anything. Yes, a kid. It's a llama's bone. It's the femur of the llama. We use because uh, those uh, kind of bones are very soft and we use for our bone. And after finish the blanket, we make the edge, we call Nyawi Awapa, Nyawi Awapa means the Inca Prince's eyes. It's like our signature we put in the blanket. This kind of uh, thing we put in the end of the work is like, uh, like from our village. Thank you so much for your attention and for your visit too. We hope you like it, our work. Um, now we invite you to look our work, it's maybe you decide to buy something, we are going to give you very special Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. 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 Yes. Yes. Like some like some yes. 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 Sounds like coal, doesn't it? <laughs> at 12,000 feet altitude. Just working on the parking lot, so tomorrow we'll talk about that. So you will have chance. If we, if we meet tomorrow, a porter working in the parking lot, so I will stop the bus and you will have chance.
Okay, I don't know the name of this. It's uh, an altar to the sun that we're up on top of. And there's the old man's face right there in the middle. And we're looking up that canyon. It's starting to rain. Old mountain here is where they grew their corn by terracing it. Now this mountain up here where the sun comes out over on the left side it's December when it hits at the very top in one of those notches it meant something and went down to the right to the point there is the solstice June 21st that's kind of how the Incas knew when to plant when to harvest and things oh there's mom up there Amazing amount of work and the carvings of these big blocks and how perfectly they fit together with no mortar. Oh, who do we see here? This is the town. I don't 
can't even remember the name. But tomorrow, we'll leave from here <coughs> and go up to Machu Picchu. So this should be Urubamba, Euro, Urubamba town. They're little scooters that they drive around in. And we're here with Ken and Stephanie, they're from California. We just had lunch with them. We took a taxi, went up to the salt mines. chickens all ready to be eaten Yeah. 
There seems to be an abundance of produce. I might have to go back and get that now. Started this. It's coming. I think it But the native are new about this place, right? They just uh, talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> are there people over there? Oh, yes. This is the famous. How do you know? Well, in a big chamber. There is an Inca trail going up. Oh, there's a trail. So, but it's a little tricky trail. Oh, yeah. That's very steep. Don't worry about it. Machu Picchu. Thank you. 
So they just use solid granite. Okay. This is our first glimpse of Machu Picchu. Push your dog. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm counting, I'm checking. All right. Ready? One, two. Okay. You have to take a little bit of the valve. Okay. Yeah. Just stay there. Good, right there. Don't fall, okay? Stay. Chicken leg. Ready? Very nice. Are you videoing? Yeah. Hold the coca leaf friends from the bottom of this of the coca leaf and the dark green have to be facing to you. Okay. Alright? Playing blackjack. <laughs> right? So we also have seats over the friends, please. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. This is the representation of our universe according to Andean cosmology, according to Andean oh my, religion. Our little fire. Each coca leaf is the representation of different walls. Remember that we are between two different walls. Uh -huh. Don't climb the walls, please. Hello. Upper world, mm -hmm. present world, and the womb of the Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. All right? So, friends, coca leaves always play important role in our religious activities. All right? So... Coca leaf friends was say, was is and is gonna be sacred forever. Around this around this century, Inca people found many sacred mountains. Not only one, not just the one that is in front of us that we call Huayna Picchu or Yang Mountain. There is another one that unfortunately we cannot see very well. Machu Picchu, Old Mountain, Putucusi, Vizcachania. We have many sacred mountains around this place. That was one of the reasons why civil engineers at Inca time decide to build this Mecca or Tibet of South America on the middle of nowhere to be protected mm -hmm. until the end of our days by the spirit of the mountains. The once. mountains, friends, are alive for us. The spirit of the mountains, they are always watching us and protecting us. Forget the religion. We are talking about universal religion. The coca leaves you have in your hands, friends, that is the median. That is the best way that is going to contact you with the spirit of the mountains. Alright? Once again, we are so lucky, including me, everybody, the ones who are in Machu Picchu, very lucky to be here, friends, the first day of this Maybe year. you want to sit? Friends. Why? Why? 4K. It's the uh. first, we closed one period last night, mm -hmm. and this is the beginning of, we are a new person. Yesterday we did the ceremony in Moray, mm -hmm. all right? And we are here, friends, just in front of this mountain, and we have this, uh, this great opportunity, friends, just to reborn in that. To be a new person. Mm -hmm. So Machu Picchu is not just a simple Inca city. Mm -hmm. It's more than that, as we are going to discover the secret, uh, the, and the, the, the meaning of Machu Picchu city, friends, just in the next hours, okay? So, that is the mountain, one of the mountains, the, the Guayna Picchu mountain, friends. And yes, I invite you yes to not to pray, 
but to close your eyes, let's say for 20 or 30 seconds, and during this time, friends, so whatever you wanna, whatever whatever your heart or your mind want to say to the mountain, to the spirit of the mountain, friends, is welcome. Said thank you for this or thank you for that. If you have some wishes, some some dreams for this year, some projects for this year, friends, also you also can ask for that help. All right. So the spirits are always, friends, protecting and watching. All right. So we have 20 or 30 seconds. Here. you done, you can start chewing the coca leaves. Oh, three of it. Sacred ceremony. Mm -hmm. Fill the coke. What? Oh, the bottle. Mm -hmm. That's oh. not chicha, huh? No, wine. Oh, wine. Wine, mm -hmm. blood of the Mother Earth for us. Oh. Blood of Jesus Christ for a Catholic holy. Uh -huh. But this is not drinkable. This is just having for the Mother Earth. We use this oh. support. How much is this? Two solids. I think some of you also bought two yeah? no, solids. I buy, but I, yeah, I was like. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's help. Sorry? It's help. The first 20 minutes in this place, general information about Machu Picchu. After that, we'll continue for one, a little bit more than one hour, friends, exploring the most important places of Machu Picchu. Then the third part will be, yes, I mean, as we call here, free time, but it's not just free. The ones who want to go to the upper part will go with me or with with, uh, with Oscar, and the rest of the group, the group will continue exploring the other side of Machu Picchu City. According to National Geographic Society, this place was discovered by Mr. Hiram Bingan, professor and archaeology who was born in Honolulu, United States. This uh, teacher and explorer found this place at 1911-24 of July. Making many magazines said the same thing, tell us the same thing. In Peru we have several evidences, many documentation, friends, books and notes to prove that this place was discovered 10 years before his arrival by local people. Local people from a small town called <coughs> Mandor Pampa, that is just by there, behind that map. They were farmers. And those guys found this place at 1901. Evidences plenty. And also Bing and friends took a picture of the Temple of Three Windows. And the Temple of Three Windows, Bing and found the last name of one of them. That said Lizarraga, 1901. Hmm. During this time, since 1901 until 1911, the ones who found this place, the, the local people, we don't know exactly, we don't understand exactly why they why they didn't report anything about this Inca city to our authorities in Cusco city or in Peru or just around this place. What I normally speculate, this is just one of our speculations in our circle of studies about Inca civilization, friends. We think that they probably found very interesting things here. Potteries, domestic and religious potteries. Who knows if they found also gold here mm -hmm. or silver. And it was a kind of like a holy treasure for them. It was the best way just to get money as well from uh, local people or from different kind of collections. That is one of the important things, friends, that we are still studying. Um, what happened during that time, during 1910s, basically 
local people, the local people, when they found Inca treasures, mummies, or places like this, they basically were considered looters because they took everything and they took all of these objects to one place in Cusco City called San Francisco, La Plaza de San Francisco, or San Francisco Square, where they had actually a kind of like a black market. In this kind of a black market, the local people used to sell this kind of stuff. And there were many collectionists, no just Peruvian collectionists, the people who used to buy this kind of things to take it, to take them to their private museums. Many of them were basically from Chile, Chilean collections. Unfortunately, in that way, in all of this period, 1910s, friends, and 1915s, so we lost a lot of information of our history. Years later, Mr. Bingan, he came to Peru, no looking, no looking for Machu Picchu. His plan, his main plan was, friends, studied more about Simon Bolivar and San Martin, the ones who gave us freedom against Spaniards' colony. Well, remember that he was a teacher in Yale University. And he was a teacher particularly of Latino American history. When he was in Lima, this uh, teacher, he had the great opportunity to be in contact with our main president, that his name was Augusto Beleguia. Augusto Beleguia told him the existence of a very interesting Inca city, nowadays known as a Vilcabamba. Because of the last capital or last refuge of Andia of Inca culture. It was the place where Incas also fought against the Spanish. It was the moment when he decided not, not to continue with his plan A and he continued looking or searching Vilcabamba, the last capital of this of this Inca civilization. All right? In all of this process, in all of this time, friends so actually being and found many other archaeological sites. But the most important thing, the most beautiful thing that this North American explorer found was actually the place where we are right now, called nowadays Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Señores, Bingan, Hiram Bingan, as I was telling to you, for many books, for many historians, he was the true discoverer of this place. As you see, basically Bingan, he was looking for another Inca city, Vilcabamba. By the way, he also found that place. He also found that place and many other places. 1911, 23rd of July, Bingan, he spent a night actually years in the, at the end of the Sacred Valley of the Incas in a place called Olante Tambo. Following day, he basically just started again with his expedition. He walked along this river, the river that we saw this morning, mm -hmm. all right? And when he got Bandor Pampa, that little village, that is in that direction, so basically it was too late, and he spent a night in that area. Next day, July 20, three years, friends, the Spaniards destroyed almost everything. Altars, Inca temples, killing people, raping girls, so uh, uh, stolen their gold and silver. And those guys, the inhabitants of Machu Picchu City, they already knew the future of this town. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Incas, the nobles, who, the nobles, the ones who had the Inca, the royal blood, so the ones who were here, they know that the Spaniards were destroying everything there mm -hmm. in order to protect Machu Picchu City against their genocide. Friends, what they did is basically just destroyed the Inca trails that, are, that were coming from the Andes mm -hmm. to this place. All right? So five Inca trails are coming from the mountains to this place and three of them, three other three Inca trails are going to the, to the Amazon base. Mm -hmm. They knew the future of Machu Picchu City. If Spaniards, would have found Machu Picchu, they would have destroyed as they destroyed Cusco. Mm -hmm. What else? Build another 16 chapel easily in this place. Mm -hmm. yeah. History think, historians said that we had only one kind of your back place. Uh, we had only one kind of conquerors. I think there were two. The first one, the ones who came here looking what? Gold. And gold. silver. The meaning of gold and silver for us was simple, but gold and silver for them in Spain, 16th century, totally different, right? Mm -hmm. What else? What do you think was the other team? Greed. Converse. Religion. religion. Yeah, religion. Crusader. The religion was the second. That's the also friends 
order to destroy our Inca temples and to build churches over there. You will see friends today, tonight, and tomorrow, the ones who are in these highlights of Cusco, how impressive, how huge is this cathedral in Cusco City, the biggest one in Peru, and the first Roman Catholic cool. Church friends in of uh, South America. Wow. Just imagine, the Spaniards here. Obviously, they will have destroyed everything and built another huge, huge Catholic church here. Friends, I am Catholic too. I was telling to you that I am Catholic, but right now I'm, I am talking as a historian, historian. Friends, something like that. Okay, that was the main reason, Molly, why the Incas decided to abandon. When they abandoned the last ones, so they burned it. They burned all of this place. They intentionally destroyed their sacred objects. All right? And probably some of them, the ones who couldn't carry in their bags, friends, some idols of gold or silver or sacred stone, they ran away into the jungle. When it happened, a new legend started to appear about El Dorado mm. or El Paititi, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the sacred golden Inca city that people think would be located in the jungle. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? So the jungle, the Amazon basin is huge. We have better technology, we have the Google Air, we have all of this kind mm -hmm. of technology and we don't know exactly where it is. Yeah. If this city is true, Machu Picchu was a legend, thanks to Bingang, is famous in all over the world. If this city, friends, uh, is, is true, obviously local people already know the existence of this city. When Oscar will go to the Amazon jungle, when he will find this Paititi city, he will be considered the true discoverer of this place, but not the local people. That normally happens in many places. If, if this uh, city is located in the Amazon basin, in the jungle, in any part of the jungle, so there are a lot of gold there. A lot, a lot of gold. Mm? No, just from Machu Picchu, from many other places. Mm? So that is the reason why they abandoned Machu Picchu here. Just to protect the sound against the, the Spaniards. And the other thing was, I mean, so there were not more pilgrims in this place. And there were not just reason to be in Machu Picchu. How many do you need to do this? Do you need to do this? Do you need to do Let's give you the right answer. Mr. Google. Google. How many people come here? 912,000. 2,500,000. 2,500 visitors times 365 days a year. No, I'm not going to do it.
Okay, there's the river down below that we followed in the train. And here's, I believe he said was the observatory. And that window there faces southeast. And the window around the corner to the right faces east. And those were the, were the two winter and summer equinoxes where the light would come over through this mountain. Up in here. When that when that light would come down here, these are the stairs coming up to here. When that light would go through that window, that would be the one of the equinoxes. And every one of these places where you see the the A frame was part of the roof that you would see over there. The grass. But grass was, they had to haul in the grass for these, the thatch <laughs> for the roofs because the grass didn't grow here. Okay, this is where the spot for the typical picture for Machu Picchu is taken. And the mountain in the background. And on this side, all the way down to the river. And this is what it's all about. This is why we came right here. And this is one of the most amazing places we've ever been to in our lives. All right, this is going to be probably the last of our pictures up here. And so, just because it's so amazing, we just have to take another one. Amazing. see a train down there waiting to take us back. <laughs> and a little visitor. We were not expecting to see llamas up here at the very top.
Uh, this is a little shopping center across the, the uh, street from our hotel. It's very unbusy at this moment, but everybody has their own little cubby hole. And that seems to be their existence. And that's our hotel. And mom is somewhere around here eating. I can't see the finder. Okay, this is the city of Rachi, R-A-Q-C-H-I, which is uh, 700 years after Christ. So it predated the Incas, and apparently the Incas took their architecture from this temple that we're focusing on, of which I've taken some pictures of. And this little village was protected by this wall that went around it. There were 35 different guard towers around it, protecting them from other Indians. And this section over here is where the villagers lived. And we are in some kind of a ceremonial place. But this, <clears throat> this building, or these walls here, this was actually the center of the, of the temple that we took a picture of earlier. And over here in this area was some sort of religious, but I can't remember what it is. down for a ways and all this corn and little terraced terraced gardens just a beautiful place here okay over there is where our last pictures were taken uh, <clears throat> which was some sort of sacrificial. Now we're over here where the peasants lived. We're approximately, I think, about 11,000 elevation. And all of these little structures, they had grass 
roofs back then. These are to protect the, uh, the mud from dissolving away. These circular, these circular um, foundations of rock where, where the visitors lived. And there's an example of the uh, grass roofs that they would have used back in those days. So it's quite a village. And you can see the gardens back there where we took the last videos. And, oh, I see one of the natives came out to get some sunshine here. Hi, native. Okay, this is the high point of our journey here from, from being in Peru. The altitude here is 4,335 meters above sea level. Before you get in the bus, don't forget to pick up your bus lunch. And you know, solamente vegetales. Go ejena. Amar y atomo. Vaya para allá. Todito para acá. And of course we have vendors. We have vendor peas with Stephanie and her dad, Ken. Uh, the last name is Rabbit, Rabbit something. We go by boat, wherever we find a route. He said in the ancient time, this was the one thing we used. It was any wood pole, you call, like, you know, this uh, bushes or, or tree, you know, uh, branches we got. So one of these pieces, like a stick now, is we took to the water, wherever we found it. How did they break, Comes That was the way they used to break before. See? It was much harder. It took much more time to make, to split them, to break them from the bottom. So that was in the beginning. Let's say hundreds of years we used the poles that we got from mainland. Now look at this is nowadays, 21st century. <laughs> See? In the last years, especially the last 30 years, we used this. You call the saw, we got a saw for splitting and breaking now. That makes it much easier. Instead you spend six months working to break with the pole, now it's probably about two months to break with the saw. That's amazing. See, one of these bunches, look at, this is one little one. What we're going to make here is a demonstration. Let's make the demonstration. Is this already is in it? the lake? Or they After the lake we break the route from wherever we went to, we, we tow the route here. We will like, you know, we go by boat, we tie these routes to the boats and we tow them to this place. Mm. When you tow and you put them here, you should put them back together. Every bunch, every of these we call block. What did he do? He put, he did sink in it, you know, one 
piece of stick, this little. We use the proper trunks like this one here, or roughly I got here another one too. We would use these ones, these trunks to make new islands. See, you got one there? Now look at it. We put this and we tie it. Nowadays version is this, you call nylon ropes and strings, as we use. When I was a child, we got the other we call a straw. I don't see any straw here. Did you want? Mom? No. They don't have here one, but you know, this is, you see here the little string here, we used to wrap the boat, the little boat. Is this the straw strings or ropes we made before, like, see? Somewhere around they dropped it or they left it. By the way, yeah. Oh, see. Now, look at it. We should, we should put on top, as soon as we work or we finish with the root, we put on top the reeds, all of them. This root that you bring, is it on the mainland or is it in the lake? This, the lake. You're, the lake. You go and dig this out. And we in dig the, it out of the lake. Out of the lake. Yes, Malin. Then you move it to the place you want yes. to build an island. Uh -huh. <laughs> Five, six miles away. Is that like... There would be, like, if I would say, you know, there is a place like a quarry where we go to dig it out. We tow here five miles away and we make the island. Like that. That's it. See? What kind of wood is it? This one is nowadays eucalyptus. Is it from the mainland? Yeah, but, yeah, but eucalyptus came just 120 years ago from Australia to Peru. So, you know, what we used 500 years ago? It's been some of these poles, you see, we got it in the little bushes you saw by by the hills. If you haven't noticed yesterday, that's why, the, you know, I'll tell you a little thing. The Incas, when they came up here, and the Incas, they said, okay, let's build in Titicaca. And then they asked, how do we roof? There was no wood. Incas also got impressed, no wood around here. And they used the stones to make the roofs. That was the same problem before. These people, they only got this from the hills, these little poles, that they come with the little bushes not with the trunks or trees like eucalyptus. They're quite tall. They, they used, initially used the small ones. And I guess the first, our ancestors, they made the islands, they had a problem. Like every time or soon, you know, like two, three months after they made it, one island is split it and they had to fix it up every time. See, this is one thing. Look at, we added on top the reeds and we crossed over. And you see, we added a little extra here. It would be like this house here, where you see the lady coming out. You would. What, what would I say about the houses you see there? They come higher than where the island. Okay. We got lifted up the house. We made up, we lift one house up. Four men of them, they do. And a fifth man comes and adds more reeds underneath. So we made it higher purposely to make this drier insulation, you call. So that would be the only place, I guess, these people can get it dry and, and sleep. If you put your mattress here and you come asleep, you would get wet. See? Because this is wet. When the tourists come in order sunny day and they want to touch this, it's dry. But this little is dry. And I did say this is 10 feet thick island. So the rest down below is all wet, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? This is for that. Okay, look at that. Look at here, this is the shape of the houses we made in the beginning. If you got something like this back in USA, you call teepee, teepee's house. That's what it looked like. This is the modern houses. The same houses that they use today, or the current houses you see around, that's what they use. The reed is just, the roof is just reed. Yes, and as the well rain, the wall. And the yes. rain does not come through the reeds. No, because we're smart. Look at, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, look at straight that way. You see the wall inside the house? What's there? Plastic. Yeah. When it's raining heavily, we will go to the city, buy plastic bag and put underneath the roof. That's, but some people don't have the money. What do they do? There's more layers on top of the roof. Is that how we stop the water? Comes okay. Okay, look at here. What is next? A tower. Yeah, you got a tower here. This here, with a letter, you know, is the tower. What do they use the tower nowadays? We call them lookout point tower for, for tourists. <laughs> now, but you know, in the beginning, it was a watch tower. Just to see who comes around. I mean, if I escape from somebody, <coughs> this was the way we <coughs> say. Did the islands ever war between each other? No, never. No. We're friends. 
We don't. Yeah. Why did you? Why not we make instead of this floating island a natural island? Taxes. The water level. The water level of Lake Titicaca sir, raises up every summer three, four feet. Whatever. Yeah. This is why we didn't make one sir. Is there and no erosion when it rains? There's no erosion that eats away at the at your base. Yeah, it, it is. But you know one thing. These roots here, you see they got a lot of little roots coming through, all these like veins, you know? All these things hold each other or hold them up. And the other thing, after you put them back together, they keep growing. They stick each other. That's one other great thing. They would grow on top, but they don't because we live on top. See? You see there by the edge, they're growing. Mm -hmm. Some of the roots because we don't step by, we don't walk by, so that's why they keep growing. So a great thing is this, the only thing we couldn't, as he asked, you know, this is going to be the other question, opposite way. Why one island which sinks, sinks, sinks and touches the bottom never turns natural? Why not we make this island when it sinks and keep adding on top, you know, more more dirt, more soil and make it natural? Why not? The root and the reeds down in the water, they pass by this process you call rotting. They rot. They keep rotting, rotting, rotting. This even is half now in the beginning, 30 years after, 40 years after, this would spread out, plop, like this. And everything got here like this little thing sinks. That's a problem. How long does an island last? We make one island in one year, about a year. How long, how long they last? 30 to 40 years. 30, 40 years, a lot of time. He's by himself, his children, and maybe he'll see his grandchildren starting and concerning to make a new one. Mm. By the way, that's what happened to me. Grandma made it, passed down the children, and the grandchildren we were concerned to make a new island. It's too much time, so I guess 30, 40 years is enough to live down by or around by. See? On the mainland, I live. Now I live in the city. Yeah. So they don't sink to the bottom of the lake? The, the islands, they do. They will. But it takes time. It takes 30 <coughs> or 40 years before they touch the bottom of the lake. See? That's what happened. Okay, have you got any more questions? We got If you have a baby, you're nursing a baby, they stay here. No. Huh? You have no, new babies. Okay. This grandest baby. It's more pequeño aquí junto. No, the baby is no stay here. This was their typical house. And on this little island right here, they have four different families. Okay, I'm up in their watchtower, looking down. And you can get a size or a pretty good idea of the size of an island. And when somebody wanted to make their own family, they would break off. And they'd go five or six miles out there in the distance, chop some roots like that one down there, tie them together, drag them out here, and then start building the, uh, the island. So it's ten foot, so five foot would be the root, and then there's five foot of reeds that they would put on top of that some extra reeds to put the house on.
So the house is up above the distance of the island. <laughs> Becky! Oh, it looks like mom found something. <laughs> What? No. Show it to me. Look, look at this. It's a pillow cover. It's a pillow cover. Oh. It's only 10 solids. We'll get it. Should I? Sure. You like it? I do. So we are going to another island, but we're going to do it on their little contiquis. Uh-oh. Yeah. what do you think? We'll win. This one guy lost. Really? Yeah. This is the island that we were just on. He's lucky enough to be in the city, man. Fishing, and I'm stitching, and she's stitching. I mean, you know, having babies. 